Hello guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be having a look at the Holy Roman Empire from Age of Empires 4. It's going to be a little bit of a Civ overview and we're going to also explain the tech tree and how it differs to everybody else. So before we dive in, I just want to quickly say that there is an affiliate link in the description should you wish to buy Age of Empires 4. It's generally quite a bit cheaper than Steam, so do check it out. But now that's out of the way, let's dive in. So the Holy Roman Empire, this has got a difficulty rating of 2 stars, 2 out of 3. So it's a mid-level difficulty civilization. They specialize in infantry, religion and defense, and they have the prelates or the prelates, not entirely sure how to pronounce it. But they enhance the economy of the Holy Roman Empire, whilst powerful infantry units form the core of its military. Enemies must face an opponent able to rapidly recover from attacks and field strong counterattacks. In terms of their traits, they have the Army of the Empire, upgrade infantry with impactful technology, and field the sturdy men at arms earlier than other civilizations. They have religious zeal, extract additional gold from relics and inspire units with prelates produced from the town centre, and then there's also influence. Buildings constructed within the influence of a town centre or keep gain the emergency repairs ability, which can be activated to repair the building. So looking at the civilization bonuses, they have the prelate available in the Dark Age, so prelate is effectively the monk for the Holy Roman Empire. They have early men at arms, which is available in the Feudal Age. Everyone else is available in the Castle Age, apart from the English, you get a Dark Age version. They can garrison relics inside of outposts, keeps and towers to improve their sight range, weapon range, armor and damage. Docks can garrison relics increasing attack speed of all ships by 5% per relic with a maximum of 25% and the cost of emplacements on outposts, walls, towers and keeps are reduced by 25%. In terms of the unique units we've already mentioned the prelate this provides holy inspiration to villagers making them work 40% faster for 30 seconds. And then we have the Lanschnecht light infantry with a large two-handed sword capable of doing significant area damage. So that's the sieve overview. Rough idea of what they're all about uh, so we'll have a little look at the tech tree so the, the first difference really from the generic tech tree is the prelate has been added into the town center so as already mentioned this is uh, effectively their monk it's a support unit with no combat capabilities it automatically inspires villagers to greatly improve their gather rate can pick up relics convert enemy units and capture sacred sites starting in the castle age and it can also heal friendly units but it does have quite a low health the next difference really within the tech tree is the barracks so as we've already mentioned they do get men at arms early but they also get the lanschnecht in the castle age which is their unique unit and they also have three technologies they've got two techs in the castle age which are heavy maces and two handed weapons and then they also get riveted chain metal in the imperial age so looking at the early men at arms, it's a tough infantry with good damage, high armor, but it moves pretty slowly. But having armored units in the feudal age is really, really strong. So as long as you can get them massed up, you should be able to cause quite a lot of damage. And then we've got the Lanschnecht, as already mentioned, the Castle Age unit. It's brave, unarmored infantry with enormous two-handed swords, effective in mixed armies. It has a melee attack that deals area damage, but it is low on health. So it's got no armor and it's got low health. So yeah, very fragile. Now let's have a look at the technologies within the barracks. So we have two added weapons. Men at arms wield two handed weapons, increasing their damage by plus two. So as mentioned, this is a castle age technology. And then heavy maces. So the men at arms wield maces, increasing their bonus damage against heavy targets by plus six. So this will make them really, really strong against other armored units, such as men at arms and knights. We then have riveted chainmail in the Imperial Age. This increases the melee armor of spearmen by plus three. So it could be quite a good anti cav sieve once you've researched these technologies. Looking at the blacksmith, there's just one technology that differs from everybody else, and that is marching drills, which is unique to the Holy Roman Empire. This increases the movement speed of infantry by plus 10%. This is researched in the feudal age, so if you're going for a men at arms rush, in the feudal age with the holy roman empire this would be a really good one to get because they are classed as slow moving so to be able to give them that little bit of a buff would be really really beneficial looking at the dock there's only one extra technology there and that is fire stations again this is a feudal age technology and it increases the repair rate of docks by plus 100 so moving into the castle age buildings we've got the keep now the keep has two unique technologies within it first one is a castle age technology and the second one is an imperial age technology so the castle age technology is slate and stone construction 
Inquisition. All buildings gain plus 5 fire armor. And the Imperial Age technology is reinforced defenses. This increases the health of walls, towers, and gates by plus 40%. Moving on from there, we'll have a little look at the Siege Workshop. The only real difference for the Siege Workshop is the fact that they get the Culverin. So this isn't necessarily a unique unit. However, I believe there's only the Holy Roman Empire and perhaps the Abbasids who get this unit from what we've seen so far. So the Culverin is a long range cannon made for destroying siege equipment. It has a bonus damage to siege weapons. It attacks without having to be set up, but it does have low damage to buildings. So it's sort of like a one trick pony really. It's only really good against siege. And then we do have the Monastery, which has quite a few different things. Again, you can create the prelate there instead of monks but it does have three extra technologies all of which can be researched in the castle age we have benediction which means that inspired villagers construct 15 percent faster they have inspired warriors so prelates can inspire military units improving their armor by plus one and damage by plus 15 percent and we have devoutness Inspired villagers gather resources plus 10% faster. So three buffs there for the prelate and what they can do to influence the villagers or the military. And that's pretty much it in terms of the generic tech tree. So all we need to talk about now are the landmarks. So we'll have a look at the choice of landmarks that you get when upgrading to the feudal age. So the first one we've got is the Mindwork Palace. This acts like a blacksmith. Essentially, it's just a blacksmith, but the technology costs 25% less there. And following on from that, we have the Arkham Chapel. So this inspires units in the large radius so long as a prelate is garrisoned so again certainly out of those two if you're looking at doing a feudal age man at arms rush mine work palace would be the best one there certainly because you want to get that marching drills technology following on from that looking at the landmarks that you need to build to advance to the castle age we have the red Knights cathedral relic space within the cathedral generate plus 200 percent gold every minute and it holds three relics so that could be really really huge for gold income and following on from that we have the burgrave palace this is essentially a barracks but it does produce five infantry at a time instead of just one. So again, this could be really, really strong if you're under pressure and you just want to quickly get an army messed up. And then finally, when advancing to the Imperial Age, you'll need to make one of these buildings. We have the Elsback Palace. This acts as a keep, but it does have 50% extra health and all buildings within the influence take 33% less damage so a really good defensive landmark there that can protect your economy and then finally we have the palace of Swabia now this acts as a town center however the villages are produced 75% faster and 75% cheaper and 75% cheaper which is really really good and the good thing about it as well it actually costs 20% less than every other sort of landmark that you would build in the imperial age so that could be really, really beneficial. Certainly if there's some sort of fast imp strategy available for the Holy Roman Empire. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. And uh, do check the playlist on the end screen now for all the other tech tree civ overview guides. And I'll see you on the next one.